This is character asked it. You already know character did it. I'm here with Nick Tara, bro. Tell us about yourself. What do you do? I am a producer. I've been uh, doing music for about 16 years, so like a little, like a little, little more than half my life. I've been uh, working on producing, and I, I got into it early. Like I got into the studio with some guys who were like rappers when I was like way young, and I just started playing guitar on their tracks, and I kind of fell in love with the idea of making a full song, making a full piece. And uh, uh, it started with just guitar songs, but then I started learning like electro music and um, a little hip hop stuff. And I just kind of, now I fuse it all together and try to do like a mix of everything. That's awesome, man. How old are you? Uh, 31. Okay. Where are you from? Uh, the Bay Area is where I grew up and stuff, but I was born in the, on the East Coast. So born in Philly, uh, but I came out here when I was like six. So I've been in the Bay Area ever since. Okay, man. So 16 years ago, you were in a studio at 16 years old ish, 17, 18 years old. How did you end up there? Because 16 years ago, not everybody was making music. Not everybody knew was going to studios. So how did that end up happening? So it was actually a funny story. So my mom was uh, friends with this Jamaican guy and uh, he was like in a reggae band. And his son was a rapper and, and they tried to link us up like on some like family shit. And so he was like 21 or something. And I'm like, this is like the cool older kid, you know, like I got, I get to hang out with like a cool rapper, dude. Got to buck up and I'm a little like, bit. Like. I, I'm like, I'm like, and I kind of bucked up a little bit, but like at the same time, they were very like him and his friend who had the studio were very like, very like nice to me. Just like, they were like, yo, this is uh this is our studio. Do you need like a soda? Like they were like, they treated me like family. So I was like, oh, this is cool. Like I like this environment that they can work with like a kid and they're, it's not awkward or something. So I felt very comfortable off the bat. Like, and then when, when I started to play for them, that's when it really like clicked. Like there was some chemistry. Like I could play better in the eye when there was some other eyes in the room or something. Like um, something kind of came out of me that wasn't there when I was alone. So I loved that hmm. like collaboration energy. Okay, so what was your upbringing like? Um, it was good. Um, my dad was traveling, but I was kind of a mama's boy in a lot of ways. But um, he was a good role model. He was just very busy, like a workaholic type. Um, and then, um, you know, I had a younger sister. And, um, yeah, pretty good family and stuff. Um, I can't say that it's always been easy, though. I mean, I was, I had my points when I was homeless and, and uh, you know, uh, maybe using too much drugs and alcohol and stuff. And luckily came back from a lot of that, just like still, you know, it's a day by day thing, but I'm like trying to, you know, stay on the straight and narrow to be as productive as possible. For sure, bro. For sure, man. We've all been through it, man. I was, I was homeless for a little bit too, bro. It's not easy, no but, uh, but you know, we get through it, man. We get through it. Anyone who has been through that homeless struggle, like, and there, if anybody sees this who is going through it, you know, there is a way out. Like if you believe in yourself and, and, and I think, you know, what I would call like the higher power or whatever, like something can bring you back from that. Absolutely, bro. You just got to take it day by day, just literally step by step, day by day. That's all I did. And that's, I'm, I'm, I'm out of it, you know? hundred percent. Yeah, me too, man. I'm very glad to say. What did you do after high school? So right after high school, I took a little break from school. I was a little burned out on the whole public school thing. So I, I took like a year, maybe a year and a half to just move to Santa Cruz. There was this girl I was dating at the time. Uh, shout out Christina. I haven't talked to her in years, but hopefully- Shout out the it. ex. <laughs> <laughs> shout out the ex. So I literally like uh, moved to Santa Cruz and like, and like kind of just partied, like did a lot of psychedelics and shit. And like, and then I was like, wait, wait, I, I need to like do something for my life here. I need to like get on the right track. So luckily I did have this big old fund that like was saved up. Like it was like $20,000 my parents had put away for me for college. So I was like, I can go to school if I get, like pay for a business trade school. I was very blessed to have that. Um, and the business trade school I went to was called Pure Mind. So that was around like 19 or 20. I started, did like a two year accelerated program where they teach you all the programs like Ableton, Logic, Pro Tools, Reason. And they get you really like in depth with like, like, okay, here's how you master a song. And like, I was thrown into it in a way where I was like, this is crazy. I, I it was almost too much information at once. And it took like a few years after that to really start implementing that knowledge and start using it. But it was very beneficial in a lot of ways. I still refer to my notes 
from back then, even though it was like 10 years ago. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Now that's, that's, that's the way to do it. Honestly, I was kind of the same. Uh, the regular school path wasn't for me. So I went to a film school and it was an accelerated program like that two years, you know, uh, what film school f- full cell. Oh, cool. I've heard of them. Okay. I won't get into it, but yeah. Uh, I won't get into it. <laughs> <laughs> there's some stories there <laughs> for sure. For sure. But, um, yeah. So you said you went there in like, I thought you said 19, but was it Oh nine? It was 2011, I want to say. Okay. Yeah, that's when, because I remember that's the year that I got my, I had to get a MacBook to go to the school. And I was a very PC person. I was like, <laughs> I was all about the PCs and stuff for gaming. And I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know about this Mac life. So I got a MacBook hesitantly. And then, uh, yeah, in 2011, that MacBook actually, random story, that MacBook lasted me 11 years, <laughs> which is pretty good for a computer. Like, <laughs> Especially a laptop where you're bringing it around, banging it around and stuff. No doubt, man. No, no. Mac- MacBooks are mules, bro. Like, I, it's, they it's, are. it's weird because it's so similar. Like, I got a MacBook through Full Sail when I started, and I use that thing for 10, 11 years too. It's really crazy. Wow, wow. Like that. That, that's funny that we have these synchronicities from like film and, and music school. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, what'd you do after you graduated that that school? So right after I graduated, it's actually a very sad kind of like right after because I didn't, I couldn't get a job in audio. I was still kind of a noob in a lot of ways to the audio world. So these people in the audio world that I was in were kind of like, you have to be very, very skilled to even get an internship and stuff. So I started working at a fucking Dollar Tree right after. It was like the, it was basically like me slapping myself in the face right after. Like, I was like, I need money, but like, I'm just a college student who's like broke and like, used all my money to go to this expensive school and I'm kind of like what do I do now but I at the same time I was still like grinding on like all the stuff I had learned I'm like making crazy beats and stuff at home but it was like it wasn't really paying the bills or anything so it was much late like five years later after graduating uh from that college like that I was like I'm going to start selling beats I'm going to start you know writing hooks I'm going to start you know making tracks that actually people could listen to and not just be like oh this is cool and trippy like i tried to make some stuff that's like oh this is like a song it's like a a, a piece you know a little mass appeal yeah a little more of a repeatability too is the thing like if if something is catchy i hope that people like play it again and that's always the biggest compliment is when people say like oh i can't stop listening to this one song or something when did you start seeing progress in that hustle in that goal that one took a while too. Yeah. I would say it was slow at first and it's still slow sometimes now, to be honest. But um, um, the progress that I started to see was probably around 2018 was when I started to actually like get some people that were like, oh, I fuck with this music, like keep doing what you're doing and shit. And like, and if, and it, it gave me a more, more confidence on stage too. Like when I, if, if I'm performing for like 50 people who don't know my music, I'm like, if I do it the way it sounded on the album or close to it, someone's going to fuck with it now. Because I know somebody did online, you know? So you're making money with it now? A little bit here and there, yeah. It's it's definitely, it's like a part-time job, kind of, because I am still looking for other work. But, um, um, yeah, it takes up about eight hours a day. So, I mean, I treat it like a job, you know? That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. And, and to anybody watching, bro, like he, he started this in, in 11 and it's he said it didn't start really picking up till 2018, bro. Like there's it's not an amount of time that you can know that you got to work. You just got to work and work. And if it's what you love, you just got to keep doing it. A hundred percent. I feel that I get behind that a hundred percent. When did you start doing shows? That actually started when I was fairly young. I was in high school when I started like actually getting good at guitar. So it was like the second year of high school, I had this battle of the bands that I'll never forget. The guy said like, the guy who was like organizing the show, he was like, we have one rule and one rule only for this battle of the bands. You cannot swear on stage. And I was like, (laughs) I was like, fuck this, like right off the bat. So I like went up on stage, I grabbed the mic and I'm just like, what the fuck is up Nevada? (laughs) The whole fucking, like everyone in that crowd was just like, yeah. And it was like, it started a mosh pit at that show and shit. Like, and the guy hated me for it. Like the organizer literally despised me, but he like, we had to, he had to give it to us. Like we got the crowd the most hyped and shit. So 
that's when I knew like performing was left. I'm like so comfortable on a stage now because it's not that you have to yell and swear, but it, you can, if you have the mic, you know, you have the power to like, you know, uh, talk to the people to get to their hearts and stuff. So I always thought that was a really fun thing performing. For sure, bro. And that's awesome, man. And you, how often do you perform now? I'd say like once every two weeks, I try to at least get to an open mic if I'm okay. not booked for a normal show. Just because it's good practice and, and if you don't keep up with it, you get nervous more and um, it, it's easier to kind of be like self-conscious if you don't do it a lot. So every two weeks I do at least something uh, in the Petaluma or the Novato area where I live. That's awesome for real. And that's interesting that you do it every two weeks and you said because, you know, it keeps you confident and keeps you in practice. I interviewed one guy and he, he said something that I thought was an interesting take and he said, you know, if you're not performing locally, you're not a local musician. I like that. Yeah, because you can't just be on the internet. Like, you gotta do something where people are really person to person feeling you. Like, if you're just posting on your Instagram every day, which I know I do, but I mean, you do too, but like, if, you, if you're not sitting there like working on something like with people, it can feel a little lonely. It can feel a little bit like I'm, I'm separated from the rest of the community, you know? Also, shows get you real supporters on Instagram. You know, social media is absolutely part of this hustle, but when you go to shows and you uh -huh. connect with people in person, those are the people that comment and like your stuff and they mean it. They're not just doing the fire emojis because they, oh, well, he commented <laughs> on my last post, so I'm gonna comment on his, you know, like, uh, that's, that's the real, connections that's the real people that will support you and and be with you your whole career i'm sure yeah that's maybe how you've gotten some of your clients too is meeting people like and you're like hey i could interview you and we can work out something for promotion and that's a genius way to do it i think uh some of the best connections i've made who whether they buy my stuff on Bandcamp or they just pay for a mixing service like those are usually people i meet in person for sure absolutely bro and and i don't know have you do you, do you know about music you have we talked about music you no, but I'm, okay. I'm interested. I definitely heard of it. I'll tell you more about it later. I've talked about it in too many interviews. I don't want to make people listen, okay. to, like, listen to me again, but I'll send you a reel about like, it. And not I until think... they pay me, then I'll talk about it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I've talked about it too much on camera. Damn. But uh, the, um, uh, the, I think that local musicians, the guys that are performing, have the, most, uh, the highest chance of really making money with this app, but I'll tell you about that later. Uh, oh, very cool. Well, what, have been, what have been your biggest accomplishments? So one of the biggest ones was definitely like around that same age of the Battle of the Bands thing. I got to play a show with uh, Carlos Santana's son, which I thought was super what? cool because Carlos was in the audience and I was like, I was like, oh my God, that's like a legend, you know? Were you playing guitar? And I was playing guitar. In front of Carlos Santana? Oh my God. I know, I know, bro. <laughs> it still gives me chills to this day. But, and then also at that same show, um, um, there was a reporter who was with the Rolling Stone magazine who, uh, he had been working with the Rolling Stone magazine for since the 60s. He was like an old cat. And he literally said, uh, after I got done playing, he said, how about that last singer? He was kind of a Jagger type. And I was like, that's crazy that he fucking <laughs> referenced Jagger. Like he wrote about Jagger. Like, I'm like, he literally compared me to like, fucking like the reason the rolling stone was called the rolling stone like so i don't know that just tripped me the fuck out but it, it, in a way it was humbling and it was like it was like keep going it was one of those things just keep keep on the music thing forever but then recently one of my biggest accomplishments is kind of a smaller one i hit 23k streams on a song which i feel like to me is a huge number like i and it wasn't even my song it was a feature i did I uh, did a verse, for, or sorry, I did a, a hook for this guy, MJ Spritz, who's a, uh, shout out MJ, he's a really good UK producer and uh, rapper. And he just had a thing he had written for me. He's like, could you sing this hook for me? I sang it and straight up that song just skyrocketed in views somehow. Um, and I don't know, it's just like another sign, keep going. That's amazing, bro. I, I, I got chills. I got chills when you're talking about the Jagger thing, bro. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, dude. Oh, other recent uh, success of my own songs, like my own solo work, I hit uh, 12,000 streams on uh, 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 She Took My Soul. And that was like a dark song that like kind of helped me out of like getting over a relationship. And that one, writing that song was one of the fastest songs I ever wrote and produced. So it was a trip to me that that song got more love than some songs that I put like two fucking days into i'm like how the fuck do you guys like this shit that i whipped out on a bad morning at 6 a.m like 
<laughs> that's it's how so it goes. Funny. You never know what people are gonna vibe with, though. That's that's the other thing. Absolutely, man. You just gotta keep doing it. You just gotta keep trying. Exactly. You'll find a hit. Yeah, exactly. So for any young artists out there, like who who haven't made that many songs yet or something, and you're like, oh, what do I do next? Just do whatever you feel is good. You know, just keep making stuff that you enjoy. And stop asking people if you should drop the song. Just drop the song. Just drop oh, it. Oh, please. Just I <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man. Is it good? Play it. Like, okay. Like, I've seen that post like 80 times in the last month. Fact, man. Now, I know you've had some crazy obstacles that you've overcome, and, and that's in life and in music. Tell me about those. We can get into oof, obstacles. Definitely, um, you know, I'll just flat out say it. One of the biggest ones for me was cocaine. Like, because I, I, I had a bad addiction to it, and it was really holding me back. I was just using my money on it. I was, I was spending a lot of time thinking about it. And more so than any, I've done harder shit than that. But like, I that was the one that to me seemed like, okay, it's okay to do because it's like classy or cool or something, or it has this like kind of like movie star kind of quality to it or something. But that's all bullshit, man. That stuff fucked my life up. Like I, I can say I would be a lot further as a musician right now had I never touched that drug, for sure. When did that start? That started, I was 23 when I started using it. What got you to the point to give it up? It, got, it had to get bad, man. It got to the point where, I don't want to go too into gross details, but it got into like, like I could tell I was like on the verge of death. And then with the stuff that's been happening recently with fentanyl being laced in it, I mean, anytime you do it, you, you're basically putting your life on the line. And that was also one of the things that made, I had a friend who was very close die and I saw, I saw that, you know, somebody, you know, it was like almost like an RIP situation and I'm so glad he's still here, but he was hooked up to breathing tubes and I was seeing him on FaceTime and I'm just like, dude, I can't do this shit anymore. Like, I, there's no way I could, I don't want to chance it like that, you know? Did you go to rehab? I did AA actually. I, 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 uh, I know it's AA anonymous, so you're not really supposed to talk about it, but I can say the program really helped me out in a big way because um, I found a lot of love from like people my age and way older who just wanted me to be happy. And they, it's not even about, oh, like drugs aren't good or drugs are bad or whatever. They're just like, if you're not happy, if this is fucking up your life, you know, you shouldn't be doing it. And I think it's a very seldom person that can utilize a substance like cocaine or something like that um, and get for farther in life with it. I think it, a lot of times our brain tricks us into in finding ways to do something that um, may be harming us, you know? Like, even alcohol, I have to say, and I'm not saying you can't never have one drink, like a lot of people are good like that, but if you're finding yourself drinking a whole six pack or a 12 pack in a day, I mean, maybe, you know, check in and just go to a fucking meeting. I don't know, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's just like good people, so. Um, there's always a way out too if you feel trapped by these things, you know, like, and weed too, I'll put it out there, I barely ever smoke, I smoke a little bit now, but like, if you find yourself hitting bongs for like 90% of the day, like, like, maybe like, I don't know, you don't have to go to a meeting, but just chill on the fucking <laughs> bong for a little bit. <laughs> Cause it's like, it's like, it's fun to smoke and shit. I get that. It's hella fun to be high, but it's like, it, are you gotta ask yourself, are you still doing something that's gonna be, at the end of the day, you're gonna look back and be like, I'm glad I did that. Facts, yeah, man, like, facts. And, and that is, it's funny you bring up weed because for the first time in my life, I am consciously trying to cut back. Now I, I'll always need weed, like weed is very medicinal for me, but- uh, Yes, I agree. I smoked so much, you know, I was, I, I, since I started smoking when I was 18, I smoked more than I needed to. And now that I've cut back, I've started to see how, like, if you treat it like a medicine, if you treat a couple of hits of a bowl like you're taking a pill, you don't need to feel high, but it takes care of all those emotional things that it does for Anxiety. me. Anxiety, yes, yes. I think it's a definitely a better remedy than some pharmaceuticals out there, for sure. Like, if you're if you're taking three pills because you're depressed or anxious, you could probably solve that with like a hit of weed at night. Yep. Like, <laughs> yep. yep. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. So why we make that distinction? I'm not saying weed is is that. I'm just saying I had to moderate too. Basically. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm I'm, I'm cutting back because I need to save some money. You know, like yeah, just <laughs> yeah. It's true. I mean, 
even though it's legal, the shit does get taxes on it and it gets, a, it gets up there. Yeah, you Cali people, it's not legal where I am. <laughs> <laughs> He's still scoring bags, damn. <laughs> it is, bro. It's, it's so crazy. Really? Man. It's like, what's the eighth cost where you're at? Uh, it depends. I mean, for good, it's 30, you know. Uh, you can find okay. the guys doing for 20 or whatever, but that's some garbage, you know. Like, yeah, 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 that makes sense. And that's, that's not medicine. Was for... <laughs> and what state are you in? I'm in Alabama. Alabama, okay, that's cool. I want to actually, I want to come out to that area in like Nashville, Alabama, uh, uh, Louisiana, um, because I hear there's like cool music stuff around that area. Sure, like, uh, Tennessee, I wouldn't say Alabama so much, but definitely Tennessee, uh, Georgia has a lot going on, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a, if you do, hit me up, man. It's, it's a, Alabama is oh, exactly sure. what you think it is. You know, uh, I, I tell <laughs> people I'm by ATL because when I say Alabama, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> that's all the funny i actually i've been to the atlanta airport a few times i've never actually chilled in georgia but on my way to south carolina where i have some family i've been to the uh i always go through the atlanta airport so that's actually so how far would the atlanta airport be if you know where that is from where you are it's about an hour and 20 minutes oh shit well next time i come to south carolina i'm gonna hit you up do that bro for real do that that would be so sick, yeah. What does success in life look like to you and in music? So success in life, I would say, a little different than success in music. Um, so to distinctly like, put, them, put them both in, in perspective for me, like my success in life is is having a roof over your head, being able to maintain that roof, and like it, it's it's uh, it's like just having the love for your family for sure, and and keeping your family close or the ones that are the ones that you love and that are good to you, keeping those people close. Um, success in music, I think, is uh, is more about it's it's a spiritual connection. It's like if you feel like really like you you are making something that is beneficial to you that's helping you grow it'll probably help someone else grow it'll probably it'll probably be beneficial in some way like example like i had this song uh two years ago called melatonin and um it's uh, one song that like a few people have told me they really love but one person said to me this song helped me get over depression it helped me go to sleep at night when i was not able to sleep and i was so depressed i couldn't sleep and i was like that really hit home for me because i was like I just made that kind of on a whim as a love song for a girl and this other random chick found it and just fucking she loved it so much she like didn't kill herself basically and I was like damn I was like I never thought my music could heal someone like that you know that's the dream bro that is I mean there's no better reason to make music there's no better impact you could have with your music than to save someone's life 100 percent yeah and what you're doing too right now I mean you're you're helping people get exposure you're helping people who are who are um who are struggling artists so it's like you're also putting people on that maybe to a new fan base that would never have seen them so thank you for what you're doing you know i appreciate that bro i appreciate that if you could go and, back go oh, what's up oh one one other question um uh, shout out your YouTube channel and mine. Mine's Nick Tara. Just uh, you know, just search Nick Tara. But I want to know yours because I want to fucking make sure I go like like some of your videos later and stuff. I appreciate that. It's character did it. Character did it. Okay, cool. With a K. Yep. Yep. Two Ks. Sweet. Did it spelled normal? <laughs> I like that. I like that that you spelled it different though, because that gives it like it's your own thing. Gives a character. <laughs> gives a character. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right that's enough dad jokes um uh all right if you could go back and tell yourself tell your younger self anything what would it be Ooh, see don't do too much blow kid no, <laughs> um i would say i would say really um don't get too caught up on relationships i would say I would say if you have a relationship, be respectful, be loving to your partner. But if a girl does you wrong or something, don't get so down on yourself that you like can't do anything for six months or get depressed. Cause like there will be other fish in the sea, you know, there will be another opening to find a good love. And like, just cause somebody's not serious way when you're younger, doesn't mean you won't find someone later that is, you know? Absolutely, man. What, what love I is a big thing, so. What I try to tell people, younger people that are struggling in relationships is if a relationship isn't making your life better, just get out of it. For real. Do you have anything coming up that you want to talk about? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have a, a album I'm working on that I would love people to hear. It's going to come out 
Um, I'm gonna set a date for it right now off the bat because we didn't have a date. I'm gonna say December 10th, 1210. That's the announcement. On December 10th, The Squad, the album is coming out. It's a Nick Tara album, fully produced. Well, uh, about eight producers all together on this album. And then there's gonna be over 12 different artists on this album. So I'm trying to do like a Dr. Dre, The Chronic type of album where it's just like the whole way through is just interesting. There's some songs where I'm not even rapping. It's just other people and I just kind of was feeling it. And, um, you know, I did the whole beat sometimes, but like had a, another dude spit my bars or something. It's just a very interesting album. It's different than I, anything I've ever done. So look out for the squad. That's a lot of people involved, bro. How long have you been working on that? This is actually came to fruition about six months ago. It was an idea by the Broke Man, who's a, a UK artist who I, I work with a lot. And he just said, hey, well, why don't we do like a collaborative album and just get a bunch of people on it? And it started kind of snowballing into this really fun thing where we have a, a group chat now with like 15 people in it and we're all like shooting back and forth files and and everyone's just like on board to promote the shit out of it when it comes out. And um, it never really works out like you think it will, but I think it might be the album that like actually puts me on the map. Hell yeah, man. That's that's a lot of work. That's a lot of coordination that you've done to get it done. I'm I'm excited to hear that, bro. You should be proud of yourself oh, for that to even be a thing. You'll be one of the first people I send the link to, bro, for Hell sure. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. If is there any kind of sentiment that you would like to communicate to anyone watching, artists or people or anything in between? <laughs> hmm, that's a good I like that as a kind of like ending note. Let's see. Um sentiment. Hmm. I think, you know, it's, it's bad, but peace and love. Oh, yeah, you have to have forgiveness for yourself sometimes. You have to have forgiveness for others sometimes. Um, and and keeping it real, too, with yourself and, and uh, keeping it real with others is very important in this world. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Is there anything I didn't think to ask you about? Hey, I think you're pretty good. I mean, you did a damn good job. I like your interviewing style. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for your time. Honestly, thank you for all the, the golden pieces of advice and, and sharing your experiences and your struggles, man. I really appreciate it. This has been Characterized it with Nick Tara. Follow him up on all the socials. I'll see y'all next time. Peace out. So let me tell you one thing that I know for a fact There's no turning back when you get on the track with Nick T I don't give a damn anymore If you don't like who I am or what I stand for You can fuck off Cause I've always been nice You don't know you really haven't lived my life I don't give a damn anymore If you don't like who I am or what I stand for You can fuck off Cause I've always been nice